let's jump into our event. I'm so excited. We've got Kanchana Warakun joining us. She is the founder of EcoV Sri Lanka. She has been conducting environmental training programs for the last 26 years, specializing in birds, wetlands, organic farming, climate change, and conscious consumerism. She has over seven years of experience in urban biodiversity restoration and green youth leadership. She also co-founded Journeys for Climate Justice in Melbourne, Australia, and she's the co-founder of Edible Roots uh, Foundation in India. So let's bring her in. Kanchana, how are we doing? Oh, I'm so good. Thank you so much, Joe. Really, really lovely to meeting with you all again. Well, it's an absolute pleasure to have you joining us, representing Sri Lanka. And wow, you are doing some incredible conservation work. You are tireless. It sounds like you're involved in so many different organizations. I'm excited to let you take over for a little bit uh, and so we can learn a little bit more about that work. Yeah, sure. I'm quite excited to share about that from this part of the world. All right, excellent. Well, I think um, I'm thinking back to our test call. I think you've got uh, a presentation for us. So when you're ready, I'll pop it in for us. Yeah, sure. I'm going to share my screen now. Um, I hope this technology works. Um, so far, so good. Okay. So am I visible to you? Yeah. Great. My presentation is also there, right? It's loading up now. And if you hit full screen, I think we're good to go. Okay. Let me check again. Beautiful. All right. Wonderful. All right. Hello, world. I'm talking to you from Sri Lanka, uh, actually from physically from India, New Delhi, because I'm at the moment I'm living there. But um, my heart and my soul works with Sri Lanka mainly most of the time, though I represent a few other organizations in Australia and India too. So today I'm going to share about some beautiful, actually we love that story. It is all about metta gardening. So metta gardening is the garden that we created uh, with lots of loving kindness to help urban and peri-urban biodiversity in Sri Lanka. And also we help some biodiversity in India too. So the concept which we started as metta, metta means loving kindness. So loving kindness is that one of the good qualities that human can have. And if you don't have, but I don't believe that you don't have that because you have it, but maybe you need to develop it further with more understanding and more consciousness. So it is all about under, understanding us, ourselves, and all other living beings, and even sometimes non-living beings, because all these beings are made out of common elements. Uh, I will tell about it later. And of course, Metta Garden is a space to connect with nature using our five sensory organs. And also it is a space with peace. And in Sanskrit, it's called Ahimsa, or in English, it's called nonviolence. So it's a space that we create for all beings uh, with nonviolence actions. And it's a space created by human beings for all living beings. So it is. We believe it's a new um, new uh, uh, approach to saving the biodiversity. That's why we love this concept. And it, when we design a metta garden, it's basically a garden. It may be a container garden. It may be your balcony. It may be your terrace. Or maybe it's a physical true ground in your backyard or front yard. And it should be functioning 100% organically because some people love to use some chemicals to get more flowers or to get more vegetable yield. But no, in this metta garden concept, it has to be 100% organic. And we design it in such a way it's called mandala garden or circular garden or it's waves. It's not rigid lines because we believe that nature doesn't have rigid lines or Whereas it's all wavy and it's all, uh, you know, um, uh, going with the flow. So therefore, we respect the landscape and some can understand this as permaculture design. And of course, it's preferably uh, featuring five elements. So when we design our garden, we try to feature 
the the water apote jawayo padavin sanskrit these are the words and these are common words for us in our asian cultures that's why we use these words and it's water heat air solid and space these are the five great elements that all being like human and plants and animals are made out of we all have these features within our body and in the environment so we have to respect it we have to understand it and as i said it could be a balcony terrace or containers and it definitely have to have mulching because that mulching of the uh, of the ground is very much useful for all beings to live uh, peacefully happily because microbes live there and it has to be a diversity of plants and material with low cost because we try to tell people to help biodiversity you don't have to spend millions it's just your mindset and it's your resources that you don't need so somebody can use it so it's upcycling is uh, very much encouraged of course you have to save water be thinking about saving energy when you do garden and of course manure should be organically and basically it's rebuilding the auto function of the ecosystem services that you can do within your garden So this is the example we tried in from 2013. This is the piece of land that me and my husband bought next to our eco-friendly volunteers' office. So this small urban garden, uh, the land was uh, sold to us as a developed land. You can see not a single plant on this land because the previous owner really cleared it such a way, uh, believing that it. attractive for the next buyer and when i saw it my heart was like totally broken and i was thinking oh my god where are the bushes gone where are the wild plants gone so this is the land we bought and at that time we never had that concept of metta garden but we really wanted to grow something then eventually this piece of land since i am the founder of eco friendly volunteers i took it over and we made it this place you can see these uh, the bushes the trees and that is miracle it it is it was after two years we put our effort planting and letting grow all the wild uh, wild plants we just asked them to come up and we let them to come up. so this is how it worked Uh, looked after 2015 and today is the same it's a beautiful urban forest and when we had that day place the positive changes we discovered was initially in that bare land we discovered only six species of butterflies but within those 2 and 5 uh, two and a half years we counted 93 of species of butterfly butterflies in this urban setup actually it's a peri urban setup and wild plants and other plants we grow Uh, and uh, we we now we have uh, over to 112 species and we brought back birds reptiles when we bought that land i couldn't see a single bee on that land but then when the wild plants came in the bees came the beetles came the wasps dragonflies and damsel flies all such tiny tiny insects came back and frogs and toads and of course it was the land which gave food for us our neighbors because it was a beautiful concept we ask our neighbors to bring uh, their kitchen waste for us and it became a dumping yard actually so it was a beautiful concept and all must be familiar with the community gardening but at that time sri lanka we didn't have that community garden concept very popular but we managed to initiate that and it was it is still a, a dumping yard for most of the neighbors but in return we give our we share our yield with them and they call it now uh, butterfly garden and everything so with that example when i started living in new delhi india we had this uh, small uh, space in our temple the buddhist temple in sri so metta is uh, also a concept coming with buddhism so we, we with the with the venerables there we created this beautiful mandala garden there which was a bare land at the temple and then now it is the food provider for the temple and for other people and of 
these mustard plants providing a lot of space for the bees and the birds are there. So during COVID time, even this, this little garden helped very much by giving organic food for the temple crowd, uh, people who trapped um, in the temple uh, where they couldn't go and get their food. So it was really, really useful. And it was a successful concept talking about metta, the loving kindness. So now, since the lockdown is uh, uh, happening, and I couldn't go back to Sri Lanka, but uh, we started this beautiful uh, virtual gardening concept on the 1st of April with another 15 uh, gardeners, some are amateur gardeners and some are uh, using their existing garden to create metta gardens. So there are 15 metta gardens taking place in Sri Lanka, but I'm really guiding them here from India virtually, but I have five mem mentors uh, who are members of EcoV uh, who are helping these gardeners. So the model is successful in growing own food and helping biodiversity. So these all new metta gardeners slowly, slowly learning about sharing their garden with other living beings and they are noticing the biodiversity. So every, every day we are getting beautiful pictures and they are getting awareness on biodiversity and ecosystem services. So, but while they are growing their food, uh, they are collecting a lot of uh, information and they started respecting um, loving kindness, practicing loving kindness, and of course, now they have the love for biodiversity. So this is a concept that we can really uh, uh, passionately uh, put into the people's mind where you can conserve biodiversity while growing these metta gardens. So our message for the world and our communities and especially the youngsters is that everything is in the ecosystem is interconnected. So we have to respect that interconnectedness. And that message is truly and effectively we are passing with garden because you can observe the miracles happening in the garden. You can observe the beautiful beings coming back to your garden. And yes, this is a concept. It's a paradigm shift. Because no more egocentric thinking is useful in this world. Today, under the COVID-19, we understand that power pyramid is no more functioning. It is really collapsed. So we have to think in, think, start thinking the shift should be egocentric thinking. Everything is interconnected. Everything is circular. And we really, really have to respect that. So that is what we really want to tell the, tell the world. Uh, you can do a lot of conservation work, but start it within yourself, start it uh, within your garden, then you can bring the biodiversity back because connect with nature using your five sensory organs is simple, but you have to have mind for that and then act through your body. Then you can really, really uh, practice loving kindness. You will eventually respect biodiversity. So that's the message we are trying to pass uh, to the world, Joe. And I think that's my message on this day today. Unless we respect, unless we have our loving kindness within ourselves, we can't respect biodiversity. We can't protect biodiversity. So that's my message for the day. Thank you so much. All right. And a great message for the day it is. We, we definitely can't think with our ego. We can't think of ourselves as above nature. Um, we are a part of nature just like any other uh, living thing on this planet. So I think you're doing an incredible job uh, with the gardens of really bringing that home uh, for people. Good stuff. And Thank uh, you. yeah, and I love how, um, you know, it seems like they just become such a, such a part of the community from, you know, just a great space bringing back biodiversity, but also uh, a source of food. Yes, that is the main thing because, uh, we can't tell people um, just to give it for the animals, you know, your space. And also you can't really uh, tell them, um, grow for the others and let the insects uh, damage your garden. Um, because food is a crisis and especially under climate change, everybody has to source their food. So that is how we just try to uh, mix these two concepts about, you know, 
organic farming and uh, as well as uh, uh, saving biodiversity uh, while ha having happiness as well as uh, uh, you know uh, gaining some food and giving some for the nature yeah yeah absolutely and you know that's another great point is is having nature near you having biodiversity it does really contribute just to quality of life it just it feels better with with nature around I think the the spiritual happiness the mental happiness and especially the under the lockdown people really love growing things because there is no nothing else they could do they can't go for walks they can't go to the woodland especially in sri lanka because it's a small area we have we don't have big urban woodlands or anything so since you are locked down inside your house the garden is the best place where you can have, have some mental happiness yeah yeah absolutely no question um i'm curious what did the um are there a lot of students involved uh in the process and do they get really excited to get their their hands dirty uh, actually, yes, through because this is totally voluntary process and uh, our hope is our students, uh, this particular 15 Metta gardens that we are maintaining at the moment, they don't have uh, the students taking the, the leadership, but there are members of the, the family as the student children are there. So next step is just taking this concept to the school level and uh, other community members. This is just a trial. Uh, during this lockdown, we are doing totally voluntary. All right. So I'm curious, you know, the process of bringing one of these gardens to life, um, how long does that take? Or is that a bad question because you're never really done? You're constantly working, changing? Yeah. Actually, Joe, it is up to the uh, up to your effort as well as nature because you can't really pressurize many things on nature. You have to you, you have to organically do that because rain, uh, you know, the the droughts, all these are uh, effects affecting your garden. And uh, with my previous ex experience with bringing that our own little metta garden, so it took only one year to have that complete ecosystem back. Uh, and then it grow, grow, you know, over and over. So it just make into a succession over the two years of period. But within six months, I believe that you can do miracles uh, with, with our yeah. climatic conditions. Six months commitment is very uh, important. And then after that, it is like auto functioning thing. Yeah. So, you know, sometimes people are resistant to change. Has, you know, has there been any resistance to this project or is it just widely uh, accepted as, wow, this is, this really is beautiful. It, it contributes so much to the community. 99% uh, reaction is it's so beautiful. Yes, we want to do. There is 1% that who think, oh no, I can't dig the, 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 the soil, you know, very hard. It's very difficult. There was some complaining, some are scared of uh, scorpions or, you know, earthworms or butterflies sometimes. But okay. then I would say that one percent is also growing very, very organically and and loving the concept. They want to do it because they get inspired by others. Yeah, absolutely. One percent. That's a pretty good number. That's pretty low. Um, yeah, I, I don't think that, you know, you can look at a green space and, and not be happy. I think it, yeah. it, it, just, it just brings something. And I think secretly that one percent is happy. But, you know, sometimes they just like to to have a say. <laughs> they are human, you know, we have yeah. to understand that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I want to explore um, one of the other projects. So uh, Journeys for Climate Justice uh, sounds really interesting. Can you tell us a little bit about that project? Yeah, actually it is interesting because um, I, I had this opportunity to meet Jim Crossworth with, from uh, Australia, Melbourne, when we when we were living there so we got together and we founded this jcj journeys for climate justice 10 years ago this is the 10th anniversary and it is all about that bringing the travelers offset carbon uh, into practice mm -hmm. not just to plant trees but to plant green leaders so when 
we request the travelers to offset their travel carbon to JCJ, where we create, we train youth as climate change leaders. And it is totally beautiful concept. We travel from one place to the other place uh, without any emission. Most of the time, it's just paddling bicycles or walking, maybe a, a, along a river or somewhere. Um, and then within that 10 day journey, we train these youngsters to connect with nature, to see the things, how weapons are changing due to climate change. So they, during the journey, we plant trees and the, the youngsters plant their trees and they look after the trees. And now once they finish the journey, 10 days, it's a transition that they change themselves. And and we have now run seven journeys so far. And all these leaders, green leaders, went back and they did their own projects, uh, bringing up their community more awareness on climate change. Still, they are full forests now. Some are maintaining nurseries, plant nurseries. Some are creating their, uh, creating their local Uh, uh, all right kanchan i'm not sure if you can still hear me but i think your signal uh just froze on us uh if you can still hear me try and exit the call and pop back in really quickly um we're getting right to the end of our session but it would be great to uh, if you could pop back in and hopefully that'll that'll kickstart your signal and we can get a, a good a good thank you. Um, oh, yep, yeah, perfect. You heard me. Okay, well, that's that's awesome. I mean, our, our young leaders are so important. Um, they are so switched on. I think the sooner we can pass the reins to some of our young leaders, I think the better off we'll be. Uh, so let's give uh, Kanchana just a moment uh, to come in and join us because obviously we want to say goodbye. We want to say thank you after such a great presentation and really great work that she's doing uh, in Sri Lanka, but also uh, in Australia as well. Um, we're inspiring and creating uh, those new youth, those new leaders. Well, we do wait to see if Kanchana can get back in. I do want to remind everybody that we do have our prints for conservation on the website. So you'll see it right up there in the top menu when you visit globalbiofest.com. We have a great series of prints available there. Um, limited runs of 25 for each take your pick follow the instructions sending us an email uh, and we'll get you set up uh canada us uk europe uh we'll ship to but if you're somewhere else and you'd really like a print uh just shoot us a message and we'll figure out how to make it happen uh, we definitely don't want to leave out any of the globe uh during the global biodiversity festival okay i see kanchana is back let me bring her back in kanchana we missed you we lost you for a minute Sorry about it. Sometimes technology, you know. It's oh, trust me, I know all about technology. Um, I think we've been incredibly lucky throughout uh, the event so far. We've still got a long way to go. With you know, speakers joining from over fifty different countries, we're going to see a lot of different technology coming our way. <laughs> yes. Well, can China, uh, you know, I was just saying to the to the audience that. Um, you know, inspiring, giving our young leaders you, uh, those opportunities to lead, to grow is so important. And, you know, the sooner that we can hand the reins to uh, some of our young leaders, the better uh, it's going to be for our planet because they really are switched on and they really are excited to play a more active role. Exactly, Joe. We really have to do our duty as adults, uh, training them because we went through a very, very um, uh, drastic change and we have to do whatever we can do for the next generation. All right. Absolutely. Well, Kanchana, it was such a pleasure to have you joining us. Thanks so much for representing Sri Lanka. Thank you for the work that you're doing in, you know, multiple countries. Uh, and thanks for bringing green spaces back to communities because uh, they are such an important part to communities. And, you know, when people feel happy and safe and well fed, that's just going to help conservation. That's going to help areas remain protected. Exactly. Thank you so much, Joe. Thank you so much for the opportunity. All right. Have a great rest of the day. And thank you so much for joining the Global Biodiversity Festival.
Ayubowan.